In today's video, we're going to be covering Z-scores and how they can remove outliers within Python. I'm going to be doing this through three different examples. Our first example is going to be more manual and use NumPy. Our second example is going to use SciPy. And our third example is going to use Pandas with NumPy. And then we're going to remove the outliers from our data frame. A lot to cover on that side of things. But before we do jump into the coding side, I want to go over a little bit more information about the z-score and how we can calculate it as well as teaching you guys the 68 95 99.7 rule that deals with normal distributions so let's jump into that and then we can start coding all right so let's take a look at a little bit uh, behind z-score and outlier detection so first off z-score really tells you how many standard deviations you are away from the mean as z-score is zero indicates that the value is going to be exactly the mean. A positive indicates that the value is above the mean, whereas a negative z-score indicates the value is below the mean. So let's take a look at a calculation. Let's say, for example, your value is 13, the mean is 5, and you have a standard deviation of 4. So the first thing you're going to do is take your value and subtract it the mean. So 13 minus 5 equals 8. And then we're going to divide by the standard deviation, which is 8 divided by 4, which is equal to 2. Um, on the other side, things, right? And I should mention that this 2 means you're, again, two standard deviations away from the mean, right? Because our standard deviation is 4, the mean is 5. So 5 plus 4 plus 4, 13, which is our value. So this is kind of the rule behind it, and it's kind of detecting outliers, right? So assuming that you have a normal distribution which you have this over here right about 50 percent on both sides of the mean um 68 of the values are going to be within one standard deviation 95 percent of the values are going to be within two standard deviations and then 99.7 percent of the values are going to be within three standard deviations on both sides so when you have a value that's going to be over three standard deviations away, you can consider that as an outlier. Now, you can determine if you want to remove the outlier or not and see how it impacts your machine learning models. And we're not going to cover that fully in this video because there are some impacts on that. But I will be showing you how we can detect outliers within data frames and also how we can label them as a new column and also remove them through one of our examples. But I have a plenty of examples to go with you guys on the Python side of things. So let's jump into those and uh, start coding. All right, so let's start off with importing in a few libraries. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna import in NumPy as NP, then from SciPy import stats, and then lastly import pandas as PD like that and uh, we're off to the races. So let's take a look at our first example, example one, and we're gonna use NumPy for this one. So what we're gonna do first is create our data. So I'm gonna say data equals, and we're not gonna do outlier removal until the third example. So just put in a bunch of different numbers over here. I'm not gonna copy exactly what I had originally. Um, let me actually make this lower because it's a little high. And we'll throw in a few others. Say 55, we'll have like a one, 42, and we'll put 32. Again, again you don't have to copy exactly what I have. Um, this is just practice for you guys. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our mean. So there's a lot of different manual ways we could do our mean, but we can just go over here in np.mean, because this video is not focused on the mean, and then just throw in our list of data over here. You can also pass in a NumPy array, but I'm just doing this list, okay? Then let's find our standard deviation. So std deviation equals np.std and then pass in our data as well. Okay. And once we have that, our standard deviation. And now let's calculate our z-scores. So we can have z-scores, and this is gonna be our manual version of these z-scores equals, and we're gonna take our data list over here. We're gonna subtract out the mean, and then we're gonna divide by our standard deviation, right? Exactly what I showed you on, I think it was that last slide or second to last slide, I should say. And uh, we have our z-scores over here. And just to print these out, so print like that, drop our z-scores manually. And then you can see over here, um, these are our z-scores. And 
no outliers over here, right? Nothing over three. If I had that 546, easily wouldn't find an outlier. But uh, just to cover this again, list, right? We find the mean of the list, we find the standard deviation, then take our list minus the mean, divide by standard deviation, and boom, we have our results over here. So SciPy makes this actually easier. Like that first example wasn't too bad, but let's take a look at SciPy, right? So on the SciPy side of things, all we have to do is say Z scores SciPy like this equals stats dot Z score, and then just throw in our data. So throw in our data right over here, one line of code. That's what we love, right? And then just populate this here. I guess you could print it and we have our array. You can see negative 0.86 right there, negative 0.7, and it goes 0 0.45. Um, so now what I wanted to do on this side of things is show you pandas. So example three, um, what we're gonna do is use pandas and we're gonna detect outliers. So, and detect outliers. Other thing I'm gonna show you as well is that 68, 99.7. So, so I think that's pretty useful. The first thing we're gonna do is do a random seed. So that way you guys can replicate the exact stuff that I'm doing here. So let's say random seed and we're gonna do a lucky seven on the side of things. So we have our random seed. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create some random data. So what we're gonna do is call this data to equals and then just go np.random.normal because we wanna have it as a normal distribution. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in three different parameters. First, the parameter we're gonna put in over here is lock, and this is gonna be our center of our normal distribution. I'm gonna keep this as zero. Then what we're gonna do is our scale, which is gonna be our standard deviation. I'm gonna set that equal to one. And lastly, we're gonna set a size, and I'm gonna say our size is equal to a thousand, right? And that's essentially many data points we wanna take a look at, okay? Awesome, so we have all of those in here for data two. Now let's build out our data frame and very common just to call your data frame DF. So DF equals PD dot data frame, data frame, then pass in your data and then put in your columns. So columns equal, and these are just gonna be called our values. So, so values like that, awesome. So now we have DF over here as our data frame. And uh, actually I needed to pass in data two because I need this there, the data was earlier. So I apologize for that typo. Uh, make sure it's data two over here for data frame. And just to check out that this worked correctly, just put DF in head over here. And you can see that we have zero through four. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new column for our Z-score. So I'm just gonna call this DF over here and Z-score. And I'll put actually capital S. And this is gonna create our new column, right? So let's do the calculation behind it. So I showed you the manual way to do it. All we have to do is DF over here. We're gonna grab our values, right? Which is right under here, values. And then what we're gonna do is minus our DF and we're gonna grab our values again, which I guess I could have just copied this, right? So let's copy that, paste it over here and we're gonna grab the mean, right? So we're gonna grab the mean of the values and then what we're gonna do is divide. So we're gonna say divide and then we're gonna have DF values over here dot std like this. Okay. And now what we should have is our new Z score column. So what I'm gonna do is go over here. Again, I'll just do df.head just to make sure that we have that Z score. And you can see we have our values as well as our Z score. So great, this is working properly. And then what we're going to do now is I want to take a look at the percent that fall into a Z score of one, a Z score of two, and a Z score of three. Um, so that we can show that normal distribution, essentially the, the one graph that I showed you a little earlier. So what I'm gonna do is within one STD equals, and we're gonna do our length over here. And inside we're gonna say a DF, and we're gonna look inside over here, and we're gonna have a DF of values, or DF Z score, sorry, Z score. And we're gonna say that has to be or equal to negative one. And then we're gonna have our and over here. And we're gonna do the same thing, just copy this. And we're gonna flip this and have positive one. And then what we're gonna do at the very end is divide by the length of DF like that. And then we're gonna times that by 100. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this for two and three also. So two and three, so we'll just grab that. Two, two, three, and three. And before I make this mistake, make sure all these are positive. So this should be correct. Mids make these within one, two, three. Awesome. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna display this result into a new data frame. So we're gonna go over here is uh, summary equals PD dot data frame like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a dictionary inside over here. Then we're gonna have STD deviation like this and is we'll have one, two, three, should be good there. And then what we're gonna have next is percentage or percent and what we'll do is uh, we'll grab all these over here. So within one, Then two, and then within three. Awesome. And then what we're gonna do is print out this down below, and you can see 67.6, 96.2, and then 99.7. Uh, so we got pretty close, right? Because we're taking a look at 68, 95, 99.7. So, uh, 68 right 96 and then 99.7 so very close on that side of things all right so now we're going to create our uh, outlier column so df we're going to call this outlier over here and we're going to say this is equal to and what we're going to do is our parentheses over here so df we're going to look at our z score so z score and if this is greater than three or which is going to be a pipe and we're going to have over here z score is less than negative three and that will be on that side of things right and what we're going to have next over here is we're going to have top five highest equals df dot sort values we're going to say by equals and we'll put our z score in here so z score and then uh, what we'll have next is ascending equals false. And we'll put head five. And I just wanna look at our top five highest. So let's print that out. And we should have our z-scores labeled now, right? So you can see we have a z-score over three and this is labeled as an outlier. So let's do the same thing, but we'll do the lowest. So top five lowest and ascending equals true this time, right? And uh, just print that out. So print top five lowest. And you can see we have two outliers, right? Negative three, negative three. So those have been labeled as outliers. And now what we can do is we can create a new data frame for no outliers. So we're gonna say df no outliers. And it's gonna be equal to df. Inside over here, we're gonna look at df. Again, we're gonna have our outliers. So outliers like this, or called outlier, but we'll have equals false. And we're gonna do a copy. So essentially what this does is this looks at this data frame over here. If it has an outlier equals true, it's not gonna be in this new data frame, df no outliers. Uh, we're just copying everything um, except the ones that are marked as true. So there's three outliers that should be removed. So now our size is gonna be 997. So DF no outliers is over here, great. And then um, I can show you what these look like. Let's also take a look at the shape. So dot shape on here. And you can see it's now 997, which is correct, right? We removed the three, but let's replicate this code above for both of these to show you what the next five look like. So top five highest, no outlier. So we're gonna have is DF no outliers at the front, right? Z score, false, same thing. 
And uh, let's just print this out. So print and top five highest no outlier. You can see 276 versus when we had three over here, 276 now bumps up. And let's do the same thing on the bottom. So top five lowest, and then you just put ascending equals true. All right, and then let's just take a look at what the printed values look like, just to show you that this has been removed. All right, and no outliers over here. So let's just do a quick recap uh, on this section. Oh, well, let's do a recap on this whole video. So. What we did with NumPy, we have a list over here. We find the mean and standard deviation using NumPy. Then we do a manual calculation data, uh, which is our list minus the mean divided by standard deviation. We get our z squared values. SciPy, all you have to do is pass in the list and it does all those calculations and spits out an array at the very end. Lastly, if you wanna use a pandas data frame, first you have to make sure that it is a normal distribution. And we did that on this side of things, right? And then what we did is we created actually a normal distribution. We use lock, which is going to be our center point, and the scale, which is our standard deviation, the size, created a data frame because we passed in our data too. And then we created a column called values, which we built over here. Then we did our z-score, which was manual on the side of things, right? Uh, we just grabbed dot mean and then dot std. Uh, those are both built into pandas, which makes it really nice, right? And we get our information over here for our z-score then uh, this isn't necessary, but I just wanted to show you guys how we could build out this over here, the 68, 95, 99.7. Next, I built out an outlier column, uh, which is a z-score over three or z-score under negative three. And what I did is, again, optional, but I just showed you, you know, how we can build out these for the top five highest and lowest. And then all you have to do is create a new data frame, or I mean, you can create the same data frame. Uh, I just did a copy for this video. Uh, literally you could just say df equals df and then df outlier equals false in here. You don't need a copy, but I just made a second one. We used a copy called it df no outliers. We have a shape over here to show you that uh, three have been removed. And uh, again, just printed out the top five highest and lowest z scores to show you that is now gone. Thank you for checking out this video. And if you are brand new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. One of my goals is to hit about 20,000 subs by the end of this year. And next year to scale this channel to 100,000. The only way I do that is by uploading two to three data science videos every single week. And that is going to be my goal there. So if you want to learn even more about statistics within data science, I have a few videos linked down below in the description and a playlist right over here that I think you guys should check out.